Hey, this is Jason from Two Sides of Phi here to tee up this episode. This video is part three in our recent series on safe withdrawal rate and sequence of return risk. This set of episodes covers what Eric and I think is one of the most powerful retirement calculators available, and that's the SWR toolbox. If you haven't watched part one and two yet, shown here, you'll definitely want to start with those as this video assumes you've done so. You'll find both episodes and the show notes at twosidesoffi.com slash toolbox. That's T-O-O-L-B-O-X. In part one, I walked through the SWR toolbox created by Karsten Jeska from the Early Retirement Now blog. That video demonstrated how you can easily do your own safe withdrawal rate modeling using the tool, just as Eric and I do. Most of what we discussed was about fixed withdrawal rate strategies. In this episode, we're going to highlight another feature of the tool, modeling a variable withdrawal strategy based on how the market is performing, as measured by the CAPE ratio. Now, we talked about this idea a bit in part two, but this video will go into much more detail to teach you how to use it, just as I'm doing myself. Many retirees, particularly those planning to retire early, fear running out of money and spend lots of time contemplating sequence risk and withdrawal strategies. Now, using a dynamic withdrawal strategy can eliminate the possibility of running out of money, However, this does come at a cost. Now, what do I mean? Well, dynamic withdrawals don't truly avoid sequence risk, but it is true that they mitigate the impact of sequence risk on the final value of your portfolio, but it can be at the cost of lower withdrawals along the way. Now, flexibility is the name of the game here, and this tool provides an easy way to model and use this kind of approach. One last thing. If you're an audio podcast listener, please check us out on YouTube as this walkthrough is going to be far more effective with video. To see all three episodes in this series, to download the SWR toolbox and get all the material I reference, go to twosidesoffi.com slash toolbox. Okay, let's get started. If you don't have your own copy of the SWR toolbox already, just follow the instructions in part one of this series. Here we have an open copy of the SWR toolbox. First, a few quick disclaimers. Be sure to see Karsten's Disclaimers tab shown here from the worksheet. Next, just a reminder that this is educational, not personal financial advice. We don't know the details of your own situation, so just be sure to seek professional consultation if you feel it's needed. Let's navigate to the Parameters and Main Results tab. As covered in Part 1, you need to ensure that the left side of this sheet, which contains the details of your portfolio and market performance projections, is correct. Next. Enter your retirement time horizon and target portfolio final value. Please note that while we're using the mock data for these entries in this video, you need to update these fields to reflect your own portfolio and retirement specifics. These will be used in the CAPE based model and do impact the outcomes. The first new thing we need to consider is the CAPE model selection in cell B39. As we covered in part one, CAPE stands for Cyclically Adjusted Price to Earnings Ratio. Be sure to see that video for more details on the topic. In short, CAPE is one of the commonly used metrics to evaluate whether the market is overvalued, undervalued, or fairly valued. In this cell, you'll need to select either the traditional Schiller CAPE, option one, or Karsten's new adjusted CAPE ratio, option two. The default setting is two, and that's what we will use here in this video. For more details on why he recommends this choice, which I'm using for my own portfolio withdrawals as well, You'll want to see Karsten's posts, Building a Better Cape Ratio, as well as Part 54 in the SWR series. The short version for now is that he, and others, have suggested that there is a need to update the cape to reflect modern economic factors. His adjusted cape aims to account for today's corporate tax environment, as well as corporate practices like stock buybacks and dividend payout ratios. Once this sheet is set up correctly, let's head over to the next tab, Cash Flow Assist. As discussed in Part 1, this tab is where you can model cash inflows and outflows by year. This could include income from pensions, social security, as well as any changes to expenses over time. Here, we will use the same sample data as in that video, but make sure you enter your own numbers later on. Again, the CAPE-based withdrawal tab will use the data entered here, so it's essential that it's accurate for your situation. Everything done up to this point is the same for modeling fixed withdrawal rates as in Part 1. If you were following that approach, you'd now review the SWR data in the Parameters and Main Results tab. But since here we want to model a variable withdrawal strategy, let's instead head over to the CAPE based rule tab. Let's first be clear about the goal of this modeling. We want to allow ourselves to modify our withdrawal rate in either direction over time in response to how the market is performing. 
If you merely do this one-to-one -one, as in a constant percentage rule, there will be wild swings during market volatility, which is particularly impactful in a severe downturn. Most retirees can handle some flexibility in their withdrawal amount, but drastically ratcheting down your spending in a protracted downturn is a very unattractive idea for most people. With the method we'll use here, the aim is to soften that impact by tying our withdrawal amount to not only the portfolio value by a constant percentage, but also to an equity valuation like Schiller Cape. Now that will allow us to soften the drop in withdrawal amount as compared to a directly proportional amount. Now that's because while the CAPE will drop comparable to the stock market, it will be in a much smoother manner since CAPE is based on a 10-year average earnings measure. Now we need just a little bit of background before we edit these cells. Those who want more than we'll cover here should see parts 18 and 54 of the SWR series as well as building a better CAPE ratio. Mathematically, a CAPE-based rule expresses your annualized target withdrawal rate, which we'll call W, as A plus B times the inverse of the Schiller CAPE. Now all that means is 1 over the CAPE ratio, which is also called Schiller CAPE Earnings Yield, or CAEY. Those factors A and B are the intercept and slope respectively, times the portfolio value, which we'll call P. Do you need to know this math well in order to use this tool? No. But when you're ready, all the details are there in the blog posts. Karsten simulated different combinations of A and B in Part 18 of the SWR blog series. There's some math in there to parse, but I found it helpful to understand how the tool works. What's important to know is that this exercise led him to the default values in the toolbox of 1.75% and 0.5 for A and B, respectively. And this is what we will use today. As he describes in Part 28, these values were chosen to yield less volatility in withdrawal amounts. In other words, the dollar amount you can actually take out of the portfolio and spend, which from a practical perspective is generally of the highest importance to most retirees, much more so than the withdrawal rate. Okay, let's get back to the sheet. The core section of this is in the top left, specifically in cells B6 to B17. So let's start there. Just ignore the rest for now. The values for factors A and B are entered in cells B6 and B7, respectively. B8 is simply a ceiling on the withdrawal rate allowable. B9 is where we need to enter today's CAPE. Where do we find that? The latest version of the tool that you see here has two ways to obtain this value. The easier way, listed as I record this as under construction, can be found in cells D8 for the Schiller CAPE and D9, which is Karsten's adjusted CAPE. Now, as he notes in this comment I'm showing, sometimes this function doesn't update properly. But this worked yesterday. That's okay. It may well be when you download the sheet, this will work just fine, and so it will be very quick to get the CAPE value from here. But in the worst case, you can always obtain the raw data as I'll show you next. It's really easy. That failsafe method is to download the latest data compiled by Karsten from the link in cell AB1. Depending on how your computer is set up, Clicking this link will download a comma-separated values file, or CSV, and potentially open it in a program like Excel or Numbers. The latter is shown here. You could also open it in Google Sheets. The CAPE values are found in columns J and K, where the last digit represents the CAPE model, in other words, CAPE.EARN1 or CAPE.EARN2. Scroll down to the bottom to see the latest values available. For example, as I record this, the April 14th, 2023 data has the Schiller CAPE at 28.922 and Karsten's adjusted CAPE at 23.535. Either way, we need to enter the CAPE value. So let's enter the adjusted CAPE value in cell B9. The remaining values below will be automatically pulled in from other tabs in this worksheet. Remember when I told you to make sure they were correctly entered? Skipping cell B10 for now, B11, is your retirement horizon in months, 720 months or 60 years in this demo data. B12 is the final portfolio value, in other words, what percent of your starting portfolio do you want to remain when you die and stop withdrawing, or 25% here. B13 is your current portfolio value, $3 million. B14 is the present value of your future cash flows, which is basically the sum of whatever you entered in the cash flow assist tab, about $197,000. Now, B15 is just the product of cells B12 and B13, 
or the targeted future value of the portfolio at your time of death, $750,000. That completes the list of factors. Now one tip, don't change these values here in this tab as the formulas will then be removed. Just change the data in the first two tabs in the worksheet if you need to make edits. Okay, on to the results. The first result shown is found in cell B10, which is the CAPE-based safe withdrawal rate to target capital preservation and ignores supplemental cash flows. Here that's calculated to be 3.87%. Let's move on to cells B16 and B17. B17 shows the annual target withdrawal rate incorporating all of the data provided, including the supplemental cash flows. As you'll see, this suggests a 4.4% annual withdrawal rate target, which is equal to, as shown in cell B16, $10,991 monthly. So in the month where all the data entered reflect your portfolio and the market valuation, the model indicates you could safely withdraw $10,991. But let's model a downturn. Let's assume your portfolio drops 18% this month due to market conditions. That's a $540,000 drop from $3 million starting, yielding a portfolio of $2.46 million. Let's also assume that the CAPE falls by 15% from 23.54 to 20, and enter both of these values in the sheet, leaving everything else the same. Our new target withdrawal rate has changed to 4.76%, yielding a target withdrawal of $9,761 that month. Now, while it's true that your target withdrawal amount has gone down by about $1,200, which makes sense given a market downturn, that's only about an 11% decrease compared to an 18% drop in the value of your portfolio, so you can readily see the cushioning effect at work. Let's instead be optimistic and assume that the portfolio now increases in value a little over 30% over the next month due to a market recovery. That will take it to $3.2 million. Let's assume the CAPE now increases by 20% to 24. We now see that our target withdrawal is down to 4.35%, which makes our targeted monthly withdrawal amount $11,590 which is a nice 19% increase over the prior month. And then basically you repeat this exercise monthly over time, making adjustments as needed based on the environment. And with that, you now have an understanding of the basics of how the CAPE-based rule in the toolbox works. Let's finish by briefly summarizing the other information shown in this tab. If you want further details on these elements, be sure to see parts 28 and 54 of the SWR series. This table at the top center of the page demonstrates a way to evaluate how different CAPE-based rules would have performed over history. This is a model that Carson has used in several places in his blog. And as he puts it, running out of money is no longer an issue with CAPE-based rules. Instead, failure comes in the form of deep and extended cuts to consumption. So looking at that over time is a really useful way to consider different CAPE schemes. You'll also be able to see the impact of different asset allocations in this table. As one example, Try dropping the equity allocation in your portfolio in the Parameters and Main Results tab and see how that impacts these results. This is actually a pretty useful way to better understand how a given portfolio and a CAPE-based rule set looks in a historical context. Now, changes you make as described will also be reflected in these graphs below. And if you prefer to see these kinds of data visually, this is really a great way to do it. Pretty simple, right? In our opinion, the CAPE-based withdrawal tool is a powerful addition to the array of options available in the Safe Withdrawal Rate Toolbox, and one that we'd suggest is worth considering. That said, this is far from the only variable withdrawal strategy out there. Several other approaches, like VPW and Guyton Klinger, are discussed in Part 18 and elsewhere on Karsten's blog if you'd like more information. A few thoughts in closing. Be sure to see Part 2 of our SWR series for the discussion that Eric and I had about how we're using this tool including my current practices with the CAPE-based method. In short, it really was just a simple addition to my monthly financial review process. We also talk about several practical aspects of using the tool, including why I don't generally withdraw up to the safe rate calculated in the tool. Stay tuned for more on that topic in future episodes. Now, if you want to see more details on the math behind the toolbox, be sure to check out part eight of Karsten's blog series, which is the technical appendix and part 18, which provides a look under the hood at variable withdrawal rate strategies, including the CAPE-based approach we talked about here. As I mentioned in part one of our series, 
consider rewatching this video while you work with your own copy of the SWR toolbox. Many viewers have commented that they found it helpful to work with it while following along with the video. As a reminder, you'll find a link to the show notes in the description field of this video or at twosidesofi.com slash toolbox. And lastly, thanks so much for watching. To best support Two Sides of Fi, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions or feedback, don't hesitate to leave a comment on the video. Thanks. Thanks.